Henry, are you there? Can you do me one huge favor, please? Hey, Sophia. What's up? Are you okay? Relax. What's this favor you're talking about? This doesn't sound good. I want a divorce. And I mean right away. My heart feels like it's about to explode. There's this guy I met and I love him. It's a connection I can't ignore. I want to be happy and I have the right to be happy, right? Don't you want me to be happy, Henry? There's no point in trying to talk me out of it. It's like a dam has broken and this is the flood rushing out. The cast has been set. Hold on a second there, Sophia. You're going way too fast for me. First off, let's relax for a second and talk this through like adults. I mean, do you sound like a five-year-old that wants a new toy, for God's sake? We built a life together, remember? I'm plenty relaxed for your information and I've totally thought this through. So don't think that I'm not completely calm and conveying this very important fact to you. With a slightly trembling voice, I might add. I sort of recall having this very same conversation with you before. Didn't we swear we'd work through anything? What are you talking about? I've never said this to you before. Maybe that's part of the problem. Things left unsaid for too long. Anyway, I want that divorce and I want it now. No ifs, ands, or buts about it, Henry. And about the divorce papers, I should have maybe call a lawyer first, right? Don't worry about that. I got it right here. Huh? What? Why would you have it already? Did you hear about this from someone? Who told you? My stomach feels like it's doing flip-flops. No one. It's in the top drawer in the living room cabinet where we keep all our important documents. I already signed it, so grab it anytime you like it and do what you want with it. I no longer care. The fight seems to have gone out of me. Uh, hey, Henry, this feels surreal. Don't tell me you want me to deliver it to your boyfriend's house or something. Because that's not going to happen. This whole thing feels like a bad dream, doesn't it? No, uh, about those divorce papers. Why do you have those and already signed? What's up with that? I mean, this is the first time I've asked for a divorce, so why? Why do you already have a signed copy? Is this some kind of twisted joke? What are you talking about, Sophia? Do you suddenly have amnesia or did you hit your head getting out of the bed this morning? You can't just rewrite history. No, I'm perfectly fine. Maybe a little confused, but definitely not suffering from memory loss. As I recall, the first time was when we were still engaged. You remember that guy who ran his own company next door? The tall, charming one with a winning smile? The second time was during our honeymoon. You suddenly had the hots for the hotel manager. The one with exotic accent and the twinkle in his eye. Remember that? Uh, those guys came on to me. You made it sound like I was lusting after these guys. They were all so attentive, so complimentary. It's not like I could help but feel a spark. And it turns out that these guys wanted nothing to do with you. You came on to them too aggressively. They were just being friendly, Sophia. I never did such a thing. You got it all mixed up, Henry. They aggressively pursued me and then demanded that I get a divorce. They showered me with attention, whispering sweet nothings in my ear. And then out of the blue, they'd say they needed more and that I had to be free. And after they got what they wanted, they all dumped me. It wasn't my fault. I'm the victim here. They used me. And when they got what they wanted, they discarded me like yesterday's trash. All they did was say a few nice words to you and you took it literally. You were suddenly in love and demanding a divorce because you had finally found your true love. You got it in your head that they were in love with you and proceeded to aggressively pursue these guys. They were taken aback by your forcefulness and creeped out by this fatal attraction type of response that they wanted nothing to do with you. I'm just astonished. It doesn't become a police matter. I guess they thought if they pressed charges, you'd come after them even harder. How could you say that? Henry, you make me sound like some crazed stalker. I'm your wife, for God's sake. Didn't act like one. Anyway, you want a divorce, right? Just get it over with, would you? I was going to give you three chances. But frankly, you've used them all up. Pardon me? Three chances? Yeah, you get three strikes and you're out sort of thing. Anyway, if this happens for the fourth time, I was going to call it quits anyway. Let's get it over with, for Pete's sake. 
I've already informed your folks about my intentions. Your father did a lot for me getting this job and all, and I didn't want to let him down. But my patience has worn thin. Your folks were sympathetic to my concerns and were grateful for the chance I was willing to give you. I told them that if that fourth incident occurs, that I was going to go forward with it without consulting them whatsoever. They were okay with it. And the fourth incident just occurred. There is no turning back now. I would appreciate it if you would hurry up and get those documents signed and submitted. I'm done. Oh yeah, that's the way you want to play it, Henry? Okay, have it your way. Let's do this once and for all. But just so you know, Henry, I didn't demand this divorce without thinking things through. So, what is it? What do you want to say, Sophia? Those three times that those guys used and abused me, I'm going to chalk all that up as experience. It was a hard and painful lesson, but... But this time, it's different. I had him prove his love to me with action. Action? What action? Yes, by proving his everlasting love of me. Well, there is only one way to prove love for someone else, if you know what I mean. When our flesh touched gently against each other, that love truly begins to manifest itself. Uh, I'd rather not hear the rest. Which means that I really don't give a damn if you divorce me. Oh, is that so? Okay, I get it. You're telling me that this time it's for real? That you cemented the deal? That there is no turning back? Is that it? That's right. We physically demonstrated that our love was real, proved it to be genuine. I was able to know that beyond a shadow of doubt, our love was 100% genuine. So I'm going to divorce you for sure this time and marry the love of my life. Okay, now that you're 100% sure, who is this guy? Tell me a little about him, would you? That's the least you can do. Huh? Why do you even have to know? I'm your husband. Or shall I say, soon to be ex-husband. I should know the guy and maybe meet him at least once. It just seems like the right thing to do. Besides, it will smooth the path when everyone meets up later with our lawyers and all. Yeah, well, not sure about all that, but I guess if it's necessary. His name is Noah Bradley. Wait a second. Noah Bradley? The son of Mr. Harold Bradley? The family that owns that mansion on the hill? Oh, you know, Noah, I thought maybe you might know him. You guys are about the same age. We're exactly the same age. We went to college together. Oh, yeah? He never mentioned that. Pure coincidence, huh? He's currently living alone in a condo over in Richmond. The condo is right down near the river with a beautiful view. We're planning on living there as soon as tonight. I see. Okay, Sophia, I think I'm starting to see the whole picture. Hey, Noah. It's been a while. How have you been holding up? It feels like ages since we last caught up. Hey, Henry. What's up, man? Been doing okay, just dealing with some family stuff. Yeah, been a while, hasn't it? Feels like yesterday we were tearing it up in college. Good to hear. Listen, Noah. Can I ask you a favor? It might seem a little strange, but trust me, there's a good reason for it. Where exactly are you right now? Right now? Let's just say I'm not exactly in the mood for a reunion. I'm at my stepdad's place. He just passed away the other day. So my mom is all alone here at the big house. You know, the one on the hill. I plan to be here for a bit longer, helping her out and all. You're talking about that huge mansion on Elm Street, right? The one with the manicured lawn and the view that goes on forever? Yeah, that's the one. I'm surprised you knew about that. Things have gotten a little hectic around here, to say the least. With your stepdad gone. I bet the whole family is in uproar about the inheritance and all. I can just imagine what that big house and all that money must be doing to everyone. Yeah, well, what can I say? It's a whole mess. I'm not related by blood, as you know. It's mostly my three stepbrothers who are circling each other like vultures, waiting to pounce on the inheritance. We really don't have anything to do with it. Oh, I see. But it must be pretty tough for your mom getting stuck in the middle of it all, right? Dealing with grief and greedy relatives? Yeah, it's a lot on her plate, but my mom knew it would all be too much of a hassle, so she wavered all her rights to any of the inheritance. As for me, my stepfather never officially designated me as a son, so I have no claim to any of it anyway. I'm actually kind of relieved not having to deal with it all. I'm just here to comfort my mom. 
but I may need to stop in every now and then as the impartial observer, I guess. Oh, I see. Doesn't sound like the best situation, but what can you do, right? Does that mean you won't be returning to your place in Richmond for a few days then? Yeah, that's right. I'll see how things play out here, but I'll definitely be staying here tonight. How do you know I live in Richmond anyway? Uh, funny you should mention that. Heard it from one of our old classmates recently. Speaking of staying tonight, this might be a good time to... This all seems kind of weird, doesn't it? Like a scene from a bad movie? What's weird, Henry? What's on your mind, man? You can talk to me. We go way back, remember? Yeah, there's this problem. This may freak you out a bit. But I suppose there's no avoiding it, so I'm going to go right out and say it. My voice is shaking, Noah, and I don't even know where to begin. You got me all spooked, Henry. What's the deal? Spit it out, man. Do you happen to know a woman named Sophia by any chance? A beautiful woman with eyes that sparkle like emeralds. Sophia, huh? That's really weird. My current girlfriend is named Sophia. I've been seeing her for the last six months or so. What's this about, man? This feels like something out of a twisted nightmare. Oh. Yeah, six months, huh? Have you guys talked about living together anytime soon? Or have you given this Sophia the keys to your condo? Because according to my Sophia, she's moving in tonight. Wait, excuse me? My place? Why do you even know that? What's this all about anyways, Henry? What's your connection to Sophia? Don't tell me that you know each other. Or are you interested in Sophia, maybe? Well, I guess you can say I was interested in her a long time ago. More than interested, Noah. We've been married for 10 years. Wait, wait, what did you say? She's your wife? Hold on a second. Come on, Henry, this is some kind of prank. Did Sophia put you up to this? I bet she did. Anyways, Sophia said she's single. She wouldn't lie about something like that, would she? Especially not something that big. Can you prove she said that? That she was not married? Because apparently she's been telling a lot of lies. Oh, well, she, let's see, she, yeah, I have our message history right here. Here it is, plain as day. She clearly says she's single, never been married. This can't be happening. Okay, that's more than enough. Thanks, Noah. This is a mess of epic proportions. Uh, Henry, if this is true, I really didn't, I mean, I wouldn't have. This changes everything. Don't sweat it, Noah. You have nothing to worry about. I know you. You're a good guy, Noah. A stand-up guy. I know that you wouldn't have gotten involved with Sophia if you knew she was married. I'm glad you have that trust in me, Henry, but still I feel terrible about it all. I mean, here I was thinking I'd finally met someone special, someone I could see a future with, and it turns out it was all a lie. I don't know what to say, Henry. I just feel so duped. I should be the one apologizing, Noah. On behalf of my wife, of course. She really went over the line this time. Honestly, I don't even know what she was thinking. No. Please, you shouldn't be apologizing to me, Henry. You had no part in this mess. Uh, is there something I can do to help you out in any way? Maybe you need a place to stay for a while? My place is always open to you. You know, I was going to ask, but I wasn't sure if you were up to it. It sure would be helpful to have a place to crash for a night or two. To clear my head and figure out this whole mess, are you sure you wouldn't mind? I'm at your disposal, friend. Anything to help, fire away. Okay. I know it's a bit late, but can we meet up now? There's something I need to discuss with you in person. Somewhere private. Sure thing. Tell me the time and place and I'll drive down right away. This whole thing's left me with a pit in my stomach. Do you still know what apartment I use for business meetings sometimes? The one we used a few times back in college for those late night study sessions fueled by questionable pizza and even more questionable coffee. Yeah, the one on Main Street, Glendale Apartments, right? Up on the third floor. I think it was room 307 or 308. Man, those were the days. Yeah, 308. You got a good memory, Noah. Always did. Look, I'm headed over there now. Are you okay with meeting at a place that holds so many... memories? No problem at all. I'll be there in a flash. This whole situation is a whirlwind, but the least I can do is offer you a shoulder to lean on, or maybe a couch to crash on. Henry? Are you there? Please respond. I was duped again. How could this happen to me? I was so sure this time. I can't believe what Noah did to me. How could he? I was going to move in with him the other day. I had my bags packed and everything. I went right over to his condo in Richmond, but he wasn't there. I figured that he was still at work, and so I waited in the lobby for him. And guess what? 
The front desk manager there told me he had already moved out. Apparently, he had terminated the lease there two days ago. I had to lug all my luggage back home. I rang him right away and asked him why. He immediately texted me back, saying that he would never have gone out with me if he knew I was married. Then he just said goodbye. I told him I was already divorced and that everything was fine, but he wouldn't hear it and he immediately blocked me. Now I can't even get in touch with him. So Henry, it would really be helpful if you could pay me $500,000 in compensation and then I can go on with my life. What do you say? It was you, wasn't it, Henry? You're the one who told him I was married, am I right? I thought I finally found the love of my life. The emotional pain that you caused by telling him I will never heal from. It's your fault for ruining my life. The passionate love that was in my grasp. To be honest, $500,000 is a mere pittance for the emotional trauma that you caused. But I will let it go at that. That's all I ask of you. I'm headed back to my parents' place tomorrow, so I want you to deposit that money into my account by tomorrow. No getting out of this, Henry. What the hell is this? You must be totally nuts. $500,000 for emotional distress, huh? Seriously? I knew you were a little empty-headed. But this, this is moronic. Anyway, it's good that you're headed home. A lawyer will stop in this week. I would ask that you hear all of the details and make your demands to him. I briefed him on everything, so... Hey, Henry, are you there? Seems like you forgot something. Today is the day you were supposed to deposit that money. There's not a cent in there. What's up? Don't tell me you've gotten cold feet at the last minute. Like I said, the lawyer will stop by and explain everything. Ask him about that when he arrives. Don't get your perfectly manicured nails in a twist. Come on, Henry, just deposit the $500,000. Why do you have to draw this out by hiring a lawyer? Making it one big hassle? Couldn't you just have snuck it into the account like we discussed? Uh, Sophia? Why do I have to pay you? This whole thing feels like a bad episode of some reality TV show gone wrong. Like I explained to you, the reason I was dumped by Noah was because you told him I was married. That's why he broke it off with me. Is that so hard to understand? You're at fault. You pay. Simple as that. This was a sugar mama's dream come true, Henry. And you ruined it. I was set for a life of luxury, designer clothes, maybe even a private jet. You pulled the plug on that dream. That diamond-encrusted fantasy went down the drain thanks to you. Oh, wait a second. Say again? You were planning on what with Noah's money? Living the high life on someone else's dime? That sounds pretty gold diggery to me, Sophia. Noah's dad passed away the other day, so obviously there was this thing called an inheritance. And Noah, being the only son, well, he had $10 million coming to him. And you took that away from me. You jealous little... Sophia, let me stop you right there. This whole thing is a house of cards ready to collapse. And you're the one holding the Wobbly Foundation. Huh? Why? Before you start blabbering on about jealousy and stolen dreams, let me get straight to the point. Noah has no right to any inheritance. Hold on, don't faint. Huh? Of course he does. He's the eldest son. Look at that huge mansion on the hill, for God's sake. It practically screams old money. Okay, let me explain everything from the very beginning. Because you seem to have no clue what you're talking about. First off, Noah is not the only son. He's the stepson. He has three brothers who are blood-related. Huh? He has three brothers? This is the first time I'm hearing about this. Why didn't Noah tell me? Noah came into that family later when his mother married Mr. Bradley. He's not related to them by blood. Huh? Not related? But how could he live there all this time and not be blood related? This is all so confusing. And another important point. He was never officially declared as Mr. Bradley's son. So legally, he's just a stranger. Well, maybe not a total stranger, but a family friend, I guess. 
And what's more, his mom also wavered all her rights to any of the inheritance. The three brothers have sole rights regarding the inheritance of the $10 million. What? Seriously? What's happening here? I didn't even know he had any brothers for Pete's sake. This whole elaborate plan just went up in smoke. $10 million? Gone. Poof. Well, the three brothers are way older than him. Like 20 years older. So you probably figured they were his uncles or something. That's the story I heard too. I figured you had no clue what was going on. Even if you had somehow managed to convince Noah to marry you before all this came out. He would have received zero inheritance from his stepfather. No fancy cars, no world cruises, no shopping sprees on rodeo drive. No $10 million. That was just a fantasy, Sophia. A beautiful glittering fantasy that just shattered into a million pieces. That can't be it? No way. I mean, sure, having $10 million would have been amazing, but I was starting to fall for Noah. Maybe even love him. But even if there wasn't any inheritance, I still would have been happy with him, right? Don't I get a say in this? I want my $10 million, but more importantly, I want Noah. Hey, Henry, what the hell is this? Why do I have to pay compensation to you? What the hell is your lawyer talking about? You're the one that has to pay me. You ruined everything. What the hell is happening here? I'm pretty sure my lawyer explained everything to you in excruciating detail. Were you even listening to him? I doubt it. He explained that Noah is also demanding compensation for lying to him about not being married. Apparently, emotional distress is a real thing. And Noah feels he deserves to be compensated for yours and my little charade. But we were in love. We loved each other. Love can't be bought. It was never about money. This was pure love, at least on my part. I swear, on my perfectly manicured nails, it was. No matter how you try to spin it, Sophia, you had an affair. It's called infidelity. I'm sure my lawyer probably explained this to you in legally so you couldn't understand. But cheating in a marriage is against the law, punishable by a fine. In your case, you lied about being married and cheated on me. That means you have an obligation to pay damages to me. I'm the victim here, Sophia. Get that through your beautifully coiffed head. How could you say that, Henry? You were the one who spilled the beans to Noah. You ruined my chance and happiness, not just with the money, but with Noah too. You took everything from me. I'll say it over and over again. If I have to, Sophia, this whole charade may have been entertaining for you. Some twisted game you were playing. But for the rest of us, it was a nightmare. But, but you ruined my chance at happiness. Don't you see? I had it all planned out. A life of luxury, freedom from the daily grind. You took that away from me, Henry. Happiness? Are you for real, Sophia? How about my happiness or even Noah's happiness? Do you ever think about that? Noah thought he was finally finding love. Building a future with someone. And you shattered that illusion with your web of lies. All you were after was the $10 million. A number in a bank account. You never cared about Noah. About his feelings? His dreams? Okay, then let's forget this whole thing. What do you say? We can start over from square one. If you do that, I'll forgive you. Henry, a clean slate. What do you say? We can put all this behind us and move forward. Sophia, I'm going to have to stop you right there. You know what? I really think you need to see a professional. Something's not right up there if you think this whole ordeal can be swept under the rug like dust bunnies. Huh? an awful thing to say. How can you be so cold-hearted? Take it any way you like, Sophia. All I ask of you is that you pay the compensation and we're done. I never want to hear from you again. You got that? Consider this our final act, the curtain closing on this whole messy play. What? Wait, seriously? Why? I said I was going to forgive you, so why would you say that? Don't you see, Henry? We can work through this. Sophia, you're not listening to me. I can't take any more of your manipulative games. And I certainly don't love you anymore. The only feeling I have left for you is a bone-chilling disgust. What? You don't? But 
But I thought we had something special, Henry, didn't we? There you go again, rewriting history. We never had anything special, Sophia. There was no love, no connection, just your ambition and my misplaced trust. Goodbye, Sophia. This conversation is over. The last conversation with Sophia was like talking to an alien or something. She was just not making any sense whatsoever. She seemed like such a nice girl when we married. Where did things go wrong? Anyway, I printed out the whole conversation that we had and sent a copy of it to her parents. Just so they understood the circumstances. I'm not sure if that was what did it. But her parents apparently sent her off to an uncle's place up north to get some therapy for emotional distress or something. Whatever that means. A friend of the family, the 60-year-old rich guy, took a liking to her and offered to pay all her debts off. And in return, she asked to work at his large mansion as a maid and helper. And the parents agreed to the deal. They told me that she would probably never contact me again. I was okay with that. I wanted to get on with my life, to be honest. However, I was a little concerned about this 60-year-old rich guy taking a liking to her. I was especially concerned about the job description of helper, but I really wanted nothing more to do with her, so I left it at that.